celebration. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. The Lord reigns. Blessings to you today. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to give a couple of moments for y'all to uh, get online with us. Amen. As soon as you're coming online, hit your share button. That way morning, things will be going Cindy. out to individuals. Good to see you this morning. It's good morning. to see everyone this morning. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. King of kings and Lord of glory. Amen. Amen. Good hey, morning, Sherry. Sherry. Good morning. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Blessings to you. Amen. Blessings to each and every one of you as Amen. you come online with us. Hallelujah. We look forward to an awesome time with the Lord this morning, an awesome time together. We just encourage each one of you as you come on, hit your share button. Amen. That way it uh, starts going out to Good morning, people Laura. you know, but Good then morning, they start Alan. sending in other places. Good morning, Hallelujah. Allison. Good to see everyone Love this morning. Y'all. Miss you. Blessings. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, hey, Kira. Hey, Kira. Good to see you. Good to see you, sweetheart. Lonnie, morning, Tammy, Lonnie Jessica, Tammy. good to see y'all. Della. Hey, Della, Bob, Bob Alan, and good Karen, morning, good to see y'all. Alan, and Karen. Deidre, hey, Deidre, Sarai, Sarai David, David, good to see y'all today. Lenny and Sue Neal, so good to see y'all. Hey, Paul, Paul, hey, Sue. Sue. God Barbara, bless y'all. Barbara, good, good to, to have you, you with us. Last Sunday morning, Brother hey, Allison. Donald and Dana. Hallelujah. Allison, so good to see you this morning. Hey, Amen. Just continue, as I said earlier. Hey, Hit your Vicky. share hey, buttons. Kenneth. Hey, man. Good morning. Hey, Vicki, Kenneth. Good morning, Roger. Hey, Roger, good to have so you good with to us see today. You. So God glad bless you. you joined us. And again, like my husband said, <coughs> you hit your share button. It helps everybody just to know service is getting That's started. right. Amen. 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 On this beautiful Sunday morning. Sunday morning, the 15th of November. My sister's birthday. Happy Today birthday, Jerry. Today is my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Jerry. I love you. Jean, <laughs> hey, Jean, good, good to see you. Christina and Larry, Larry Norm, Norm and Mina, so good to see y'all. Norm and Mina, good to see y'all this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you all. Sunil, so good to see you. Amen. Joshua, good to have you on hey, with Joshua. us this morning. So good to see you. Hope you all have had a blessed week. Amen. Amen. Hope you've had an awesome week in the Lord. And yes. I do, as our prayers go up each and every day for y'all, we just continue to, to pray and ask the Lord to give y'all wisdom and understanding and to all spiritual things. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, Dole. Good so to good see y'all this morning. God bless y'all. Amen. Thank you for the intercessory prayer. Thank you, all you intercessors. Yes, we appreciate amen. you so much. We appreciate Thank y'all's intercession. Omar, good, good morning. Good to see you, Omar. Hey, Sue's birthday was Friday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Sue. Sue. So good to wish these wonderful happy birthdays. Amen. 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 It's so good to be with you this morning. I'm Pastor Rocky, and this is my sweetie. Pastor Vanji. Good and to see you. Hey, Calissa. Love you, hey, girl. Hey, Calissa. Good so to see good you, girl. See God bless you. you. We love you. Amen. Giovanni. Giovanni and Megan. Such a children. Pleasant good to see, see y'all this morning. The children. Hey, hey, great, great. God hey, bless y'all. Good to see you. Hey, hey Jackson. Jackson. Good to see you children, as well. Children, children, God bless you. Celebration. Be sure to tune in this afternoon to uh, the videos that Sandy has prepared for Sunday School for the Children, and then Sherry has prepared Children's Church videos this afternoon, and they will be there. And take time, let your children watch those. Amen. They will be so blessed. Truly I know be blessed. That, Amen. I know that Sandy and Sherry both, they spend a lot of time before the Lord preparing and yes. preparing for what they're going to share and then the literal sharing. And so it's a blessing for your children. Amen. Yes. Hey, Pam, Happy good birthday. to see you, Pam. Jerry and Sue, amen. Pam, so good to see you. So, so good. Giovanni, is it Giovanni, your birthday? Giovanni, your birthday as well. Wow, Happy birthday. birthday wow, I've got a lot of birthdays today. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks so much for sending that, Omar. It's also uh, Gracie's birthday. Jerry and yes. little Gracie. Casey, they have the exact same birthday. Oh, awesome. So there's another one that it's, Amen. it's our birthday today. This very this day. This very day. Amen. Amen. We're just going to take a moment to sing happy birthday to Absolutely. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, 
God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Amen. Welcome to Celebration. We are so glad you joined with us today. I know that <coughs> Cindy has an update on our shoe boxes. Uh, uh, we're getting down to the very last time. This will be, yes. I think it's this Sunday, maybe. Well, even well, the Wednesday, Wednesday we're going to be doing shoe boxes. And so. next Sunday is whenever, I mean, this yeah. week is the week to turn Everything's in the boxes. Everything's got to be turned money in. money for these. They're $9 each. Uh, sometime during uh, this video, Cindy will post how many are left. I yes. know that this week... Uh, Funds came in, gifts came in to go towards these shoe boxes that are going to bless children across the world. Absolutely. This is Samaritan Shoe Box. We participate in this ministry every year at Christmas. Amen. And um, what a I, blessing I, I believe it's either 180 or 190 total shoe right. boxes have been prepared. Sandy and Miss Jane, we appreciate Thank y'all so much. God what bless y'all. Thank y'all have done. And Absolutely. We know that clap everything has, you can send clap, clapping hand emojis. <laughs> that, that would be an awesome thing because I tell you what, uh, this is such a beautiful ministry to know that so many lives are being touched, not only with the gift that they're going to get in that box, but by giving to Samaritan's bur uh, purse, they follow up, they share the gospel. Yes. So it's, why are you getting this box? What does this gift represent? All this gift Jesus. represents something far more yes. than just the toys that are inside this box. And they're able to share the gospel. So you are planting into very good soil Amen. whenever you participate in this Amen. every year. Deidre, Sarai, David, so good to see y'all. Lonnie and Tammy, so good to see y'all. Christina. Christina and Angel and the boys, so good yes. to see y'all. Amen. We just are so happy to be with you. <clears throat> Once again, we do encourage you to hit your share buttons. Yes, Hallelujah. please do that. Please hit your share buttons. And even during the week, whenever, uh, as you know, at Celebration Family Worship Center, we're continuing all of our ministries. We're doing them at this, this yes. particular season online. Uh, and so even whenever you're sharing... Um, the classes that are offered. Right. Be sure to hit that share button and allow the Holy Spirit just to take take it. Take, do with it what He desires amen, to do. Amen. 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 Also, we're continuing to give our tithes and offerings online. Yes. Uh, there's an easy tie that right there on our Facebook page that you can use. Also, if you prefer to mail them in to Celebration Family Worship Center at P.O. Box 2058, Morganton, Morganton, North Carolina. Two eight six eight zero. Oh. zero that's that's Amen. totally fine too but it's just a blessing to be together today yes, get yourself in position to worship the lord my honey is going to share a scripture and yes. open us up in prayer Amen. 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 Scripture. Good morning, Cindy. Good to see you. Scripture for today is out of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Oh, Hallelujah. I love that scripture. Beautiful out of Proverbs. scripture. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, Father, thank we you, thank you for this day that you've given us, Almighty God. Yes. We come to you and we acknowledge that it's in you we live. We move and have our being Amen. and everything else, Lord Jesus, uh, we just set aside. We thank you that you rule and reign upon the throne of the universe. Thank you, we thank you that you've gone to the cross, died for our sins, and you've paid the price. And you brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus. And Lord, as we worship you today, we want to worship you in spirit, worship you in truth. Amen. We thank you that if the name of Jesus be lifted up, yes. that all men, women, and children will be drawn unto you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the moving of your Holy Spirit yes. in this service. Yes. We declare souls are saved. Yes. We declare bodies are healed. Amen. People are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yokes are lifted, burdens are removed. Yes. But above all things, the name of Jesus Hallelujah. is lifted up and exalted yes. in Jesus mighty yes. name we pray Your beautiful name amen amen amen, amen. amen. we're going to blow the shofar hallelujah and we're going to worship just like we said find a place <laughs> you can spread out and worship the Lord. yes amen good morning crystal good 
Good to have everyone. Hey, Monica and Derek. Hey, Monica. Derek.
church. Don't forget this scripture. That's right. It's here in a song, but it's the word of God. Amen. If God before me, if God before me, who can be against me now? Nothing can be against me now. If God Almighty, who lives inside me, who can be against me now? Nothing can be against me now. Oh, hello.
for me Who can be against me now? Nothing can be against me now If God Almighty Who lives inside me Who can be against me now? Nothing can be against me If God be for me
yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. There's no other name, no. There's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. There's no other name, no. There's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. There's no other name, no. There's no other name like yours, Jesus, like yours, Jesus. We sing Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about your name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. Oh, Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about your name. Oh, Father. Father God, thank we you, thank you for the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the name that, yes, every tongue will confess, every knee will bow and speak the name of Jesus and acknowledge your great and your glorious name. Yes, and Lord. we thank you, Father God, as the thank family you, of celebration, yes. those of us who have called on your name yes. and received salvation. Thank you, Lord. Father, this day Lord, we Lord, say Lord. thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we come with oh, hearts full of you, gratitude. Lord. And we thank Hallelujah. you, Lord Jesus, for the great Lord, salvation Lord. that you have given to yes. us, Lord God. And all all yes. who will call upon the call name, upon your name. Of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Amen. Well, amen. I've got to take a minute this morning before I begin and again acknowledge my beautiful sister, Jerry. Today is her birthday. She's four years younger than me. <laughs> She's my baby sister, and I tell you what, she's a treasure of my heart. I know that she is a treasure in your hearts and in the family of celebration. Amen. She is a giant in the faith. Yes. She is a warrior, Yep. a warrior she in is. the spirit, Amen. and just blesses my life on a continual basis as she always has. If there's a place that says the award goes for number one sister in the world, I give it to my <laughs> sister, Jerry, because that's who she is to Amen. me. She is the best sister in the whole wide world, and I love you so much, Jerry. And this year is a year of great blessing Amen. released upon you. Yes. You have only just begun to speak the word of God, to declare his word, speaking it out and singing Amen. it. The great joy of my heart is singing with my sister. We love praising the Lord together. We love lifting up his word together. Amen. And what greater joy could God have given me than to have given me this great girl, my sister Jerry, Amen. to be my sister. And I thank the Lord all those years ago, whenever he was knitting her together in my mom's womb, he said, I'm creating the best sister ever for Vanjie. And 
it just is my humble request. Father, please let me be that same sister that she is to my heart, to her heart, Amen. because I love her dearly. And just give shout outs today. And I love you. Now I don't Amen. even know if I'll be able to get through what God's given me to share, but my heart overflows with love for my beautiful sister, Jerry. And those of you who know her, you know what I'm talking about. She is a mighty warrior of Amen. the Lord. She is. Amen. She is she's Amen. something else. She sure is. But it's just so good for us to be together this morning. And I want to continue in that vein of exhortations that I shared last Sunday as we looked at John the Beloved. Now, he was, you know, one of those first four disciples that Jesus called into the ministry with him. But today the Lord's asking me to look at the, a second man from that group of four. Because these are the first four disciples. Right. You've got Peter and Andrew, John and James. Right. They're the first four. And last week we looked at John the Beloved. But today the Lord wants me to look at the man that was called, the, he was the very first one called. Mm -hmm. So he's even before John and James. Right. And it's Peter. It is Peter. And from the very time that the Lord called Peter into the ministry with him, he told him exactly what he had planned for his yes, life. Yes, he did. When he called him out, he told him right then and there, I'm going to make you a great fisher yes. of men. So from the very beginning, we see the plans that the Lord had for Peter. They were in the harvest field. Yes, they were. And that's why today I've entitled this exhortation, Peter, the Great Harvester. That's right. I'm telling you what, if there ever was a great harvester, it was Peter. Amen. And so these first four disciples that Jesus called, they were all fishermen. Right. I think that's so neat. You've got Peter and Andrew. They were the first set. And then whenever the Lord, he's walking on the lake, he calls them first. Then he walks down a little further and he sees James and John and he calls them. But the very first one was Peter. Amen. Peter and Andrew. So look with me in Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 18. Matthew chapter 4, starting at verse 18. And this is what it says. As Jesus was walking by the shore uh, of Lake Galilee, he noticed two fishermen who were brothers. One was Peter and the other was Andrew, his brother. Watching as they were casting their nets into the water, Jesus called to them and said, Come and follow me, and I will transform you into men who catch people for God. Amen. And immediately they dropped their nets and they left everything to follow Jesus. The King James Version, of course, refers to it in this way, and many of us know it in this way. Come and follow me, and I will make you Fish. fishers of men. Yes. So from the very beginning... Jesus saw Peter was going to be greatly used in harvesting souls from the moment that he called him. Amen? That Amen. the harvest was a huge part of his calling. He told him, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. And those words would have la a lasting and enormous impact in the life of Peter. And his call into the harvest field, we know it began right there on the lake. And Wednesday night, we looked and again, you know, Peter had some great encounters with the Lord mm -hmm. on the lake. Yes, he did. And around water. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so here he gets called into the ministry, and he gets told, I'm going to make you a great fisher of men. And then on Wednesday night, we saw he had betrayed the Lord. He's mm -hmm. gone back to the lake, back to fishing. He's downcast. Right. He feels like he's blown it. And once again... The Lord tells them, hey, turn, take your nets. You know, the, he, Jesus is walking along the shore again. All of the disciples, they've returned back out there fishing, a good portion of them. And um, he says, have you caught anything? And they're like, no. He's like, well, just put your net over on the other side. And we know that they did. And the word of God is very specific in saying that they caught 153 great large fish. Yes. And anyhow, John the Beloved, he recognized it was Jesus, and when he said it, Peter dove off that boat, and he was the first. He was the very first to get to Jesus. And again, the hull of harvest that they got from those that fish, mm, yep. that was representing, and again, Peter, God, Jesus was letting Peter know, 
The ministry I called you into to be a harvester of men, mm -hmm. to be this great fisher of men, I haven't changed my mind. I've demonstrated it to you once again right out there in the water. Amen. You are going to bring in a great harvest of yes. souls. You are going to bring in men from every nation, every tribe, every kindred. You are going to be part of this. You are going to be the fisher of men that yes. I called you to be. But did this uh, journey of becoming a great fisher of men, did it involve some transformation in Peter's life? You better Brilliant. believe it did. Come on. It absolutely did. There was a lot that Peter had to go through to fulfill his ultimate calling in life that is so beautifully described and written out in the pages of the book of Acts. And while last week we dug a little deeper into John, you know, we were like, okay, John the beloved, he's the youngest disciple. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure Jesus took him under his wing and, you know, that must be why yeah. he got called uh, John the beloved. But no, we learned that he was the disciple who had learned what it meant to live loved. He yes. has learned what it meant that because the Lord first loved him, he was able to flow in that great love, lo Amen. loving the Lord back. And he was passionate in his love for the Lord. But we saw that even uh, the John the Beloved, uh, he was quite an opinionated. He was quite a bold person. He was labeled by the Lord with his brother as the sons Son of, of thunder. thunder. And we never have any trouble when we think, well, I wonder what Peter's personality was right. like. <laughs> That's never been an obstacle. We've never doubted that Peter was bold, that Peter was opinionated, and that he was a passionate person. And he ran into things. Oh, yeah, he totally <laughs> ran into things. And guess what? The Lord wasn't uh, unknowing wasn't of those no. things. He was well aware that... Peter was a very bold, opinionated, and passionate person, and he knew that the very moment that he called him to be one of the greatest fishers of men ever mm -hmm. known. You yes. see, the Lord, even today, is looking for people who are passionate. Yes, looking people for that them. are passionate for their in their love for Jesus. People who are passionate in their love for His Word. People who are passionate about His righteousness. Yes, righteousness. People who are passionate about His mission. Come on. And what was the mission of the Lord? Jesus cleared it. He stated it very clearly in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's right. That's his mission. And God desires a people who will be passionate about his mission. Not Absolutely. their mission. No. His mission. His. And it includes, part of his mission, it includes... Planting the seed, when the Lord says, I need you to plant some seed today. Okay, Lord. Or he says, I need you to water that seed. That's right. Okay, Lord. Or he may say, hey, today's harvest day. I need you to go out there and harvest that right. what that which has been planted. It takes patience. If you ask a farmer what it's going to take to be a farmer, they're going to tell you the number one ingredient is patience. There's a process that go, is to go through, but there's a place for everyone yes. in the harvest field of the Lord. There is. And the Lord is looking for people that he can transform into great fishers of men, just mm -hmm. like he did with Peter. The Lord desires to transform those who will serve him into the most fulfilled. Yes. When we are about the mission of the Lord, we become the most fulfilled people on the face of Amen. the earth. We do. And here the deal is, it's you need to ask the Lord and see what part is it in that field that he wants you to do. You might be a great waterer. You might be the one that is able to go out and water mm -hmm. that seed. God has gifted you to be able to do that. Don't feel feel condemned that, oh, I'm not, I'm not a great seed planter. Oh, well. God has a place for everybody. Right, place for everybody. Everybody. It takes all the gifts coming together. And you may be the one that waters it. You might be the one who's the great harvester. You might Come be on. the one who is able to look somebody in the eye and the Lord just give you his spirit and tell you today's their day of yes. salvation. And you're able to lead them to the Lord right there in that minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are part of his mission. You might be the one who sows that seed. Come on. Do it. Whatever he asks.
Yes, do it. Become the ones that follow him and let allow the Lord to transform you into great fishers yes. of men. So Jesus saw something in Peter that can be summed up in a powerful quote that I heard a pastor share recently, and this is what it was. What goes deepest in the heart will go widest to the world. That's right. What goes deepest in the heart will go widest to the world. Jesus already saw Peter's future the very mm -hmm. day that he called him out of that boat. He already saw what he was going to be doing for him. Because what was Jesus saying whenever he asked them, hey, come and follow me. Well, here's the deal. Jesus was a rabbi. And in the Jewish tradition, it was such an honor to get for a rabbi to ask you to come and follow him because this yes. is what it meant. You might as well have just said, I got my four-year scholarship to the college of my choice. That's what it meant for a rabbi to ask you to come and follow him. It meant you got to come and sit at his feet that's and right. learn. It was a great, great privilege. An and that's what was offered to those first four disciples mm -hmm. that day. He had told Peter, he had told Andrew, he had told James, and he had told John, Come on to my college. Sit at my feet. Sit at my feet. I'm going to impart things to you that are of That's great, right. great worth. You couldn't get the college education that I'm fixing to get, give you. And they gave an immediate answer. All of them, all four, immediately said yes. They all four had been disciples of John the Baptist, mm -hmm. but whenever Jesus called them, they knew what yeah. a privilege it was. It, they, it said they dropped their nets. They left them. Got out, they left them. They came immediately. And there's something in that for somebody here this morning. The Lord Jesus has been asking you to do something, and it's time for you to say yes. There's something specific he's been asking you to do. And you've been... Maybe you're your own worst enemy and you just haven't stepped forward. But today the Lord's saying, yes, I'm talking to you. You know I'm yes. talking to you. I've been talking to Come you. On. Today's the day to say yes in that thing which he's yes. been speaking to you about. Because you see, even the day that Jesus called Peter, he saw what was going to be coming. He saw the day that's recorded in Acts chapter 2 when Peter was going to stand up and preach the greatest message ever preached, ever preached, honestly. That 3,000 were going to get saved on that day. And Jesus knew that there was going to be a process for Peter to become that man. Absolutely. Of who we see when we look at uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 14. Turn to Acts chapter 2 verse 14. And this is what it says. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Come on. The key word in that verse is the word addressed because it means a spirit-filled utterance. A spirit-filled utterance came forth from him. And at that moment, Peter wasn't speaking in tongues. We know that had happened earlier than in the day when the 120 were up in the upper room, that they got baptized in the Holy Spirit and they were speaking in tongues. No. On this occasion, this is whenever the power of the Holy Ghost had so filled Peter's heart and his tongue, which just 50 days earlier had absolutely yes. denied knowing the Lord, he opened his mouth now and boldly began to proclaim the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, that is transformation. And Jesus knew that there was something deep inside mm -hmm. of Peter because Jesus had planted it. He knew that thing that he had planted in Peter as he sat at his feet and he taught him. Right. He knew that 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 was deepest inside of Peter's heart was now going to be going widest in the world. Amen. You see, Peter, you say, well, you know, Peter denied Jesus, Pastor Vanjie. Don't you remember that? Yes, I do. He absolutely did. He denied even knowing him, but that was not all of Peter's story. No, not at all. In Luke chapter 22, verse 62, it says, <coughs> Peter went out, on that occasion when that happened, Peter went out and wept bitterly. bitterly. And he was overcome. He had gotten overcome with fear in that moment that people were asking him if he knew no. the Lord. And then he denied the Lord. But immediately, this was his response. He went out and he wept bitterly. bitterly. You know what that phrase, wept bitterly, means? It's not weeping because of sin. Come on. 
the kind of weeping that it's talking about in that scripture concerning Peter is it's weeping because of the one who was sinned against. Those tears yes. were flowing out of Peter's eyes because he knew he had sinned against the Lord. Denied. It wasn't just enough that he had sinned. He was broken hearted yes. that he had sinned against the Lord Jesus. And Jesus saw this. You see, Jesus is there when your tears are being cried. Crystal was talking about him this week, even in one of her devotionals, that the Lord Jesus bottles every single one of our Revolution. tears. And there might not have been a crowd <clears throat> of disciples around watching Peter cry at that moment. But let me tell you, the Spirit of God was there. He saw every bitter tear that Peter shed in his remorse over right. what he had done. Yes. And those tears meant something to the Lord. Those tears always mean something to the Lord. Amen. He sees our hearts and they're important. Our hearts are important to him. And that's why the word of God says in Proverbs 4 23, guard your heart with all diligence yes. because from it flows springs of life. The Lord knows the beginning of the end and that was not Amen. the end of Peter's story. Was it a, was it a, a place in his story that I'm sure he went back to many times. And he probably shared more time, he more tears, even than that day. Yes. I'm sure that was a time <clears throat> that he was like, why did I do that? But I want to tell you what, we should take great hope when we look at Peter. Because yes. here is a man that though he did that, the Lord didn't write him off. No. The Lord saw his repentant yes. heart. And as we look at Peter this morning, I want to share three aspects about this man. First, there's the man Peter. Then there's Peter, the messenger. And finally, we're going to look at the methods of Peter as a great harvester for the Lord Jesus Christ. So first of all, Peter the man, was he a man? Absolutely. That's what we just have said. Clearly, he was a man and there was tr some transforming that had to take place in his life. He wasn't always, as we saw him, there weeping bitterly after denying the Lord. He actually was in the process of what we see over in Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Those 50 days, sometimes we really, uh, we, we say to the Lord, uh, uh, oh God, it's going to take you years and years to do something with me. No. I want to tell you what, what God did in the life of Peter in those 50 days from the day he denied him to 50 days later when he's standing up there in the book of Acts and things. declaring that message boldly to those people that had come for the Feast of Pentecost. Wow! Transformation oh, had happened. Transformation. And he's truly a servant of, of the Lord who does give great hope to those who feel like they've blown it. Right. Is there anybody out there that feels like you've blown it? You can never be used by God. I want to tell you what. The one who blew it, Peter, is the very first one that Jesus, Jesus chose as his chose disciple. Yeah. Did he know when he chose it? You know what? There's a day coming. This guy's going to blow it. Jesus knew it. Right. Jesus knew it. <clears throat> but he said, I can transform this guy. I can work with this guy. We know that Peter was a man full of uh, reactions. He was a roller coaster of emotions. He was most times the first one to react, for better or for worse. Come on. He's very opinionated. <clears throat> Most times he couldn't keep his mouth shut when he needed to, yep. and then he didn't open it whenever <laughs> he needed to. He's the same one, though, who constantly stepped out first. There was a go-getter inside yep. of Peter. He was a man of action. He was the first of the four fishermen to be called to be a disciple of Jesus. He was the first, and I might add, here's a second time on the lake, he was the first to step out of that boat. He got out. Sea of Galilee, lake, wherever it yeah. was. He was the first to step out. And I'm not talking about when the lake was smooth. I'm talking no. about whenever it was roaring and waves lower. And he stepped out of that boat. Again, did he have a moment of faltering and had to have mm -hmm. his faith reboosted? Yes. But there's something in him. He was a man of gumption. He stepped out. He yes, saw he Jesus walking on the water. And he's like... I'm getting out, I'm and I'm going to walk on the water, too. He was the first, whenever Jesus got arrested, honey, he got that sword out, and he had already off chopped off of one, of the, one of the guard's ears. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he was this man that could react and could be the first. He was the first to deny the Lord. But this guy who had so many ups and downs, who does he sound like? Us. He sounds like us. 
He sounds like a human being. Yes. He sounds like a real person. He does. Because he was a real person. He sounds like a real man or woman today living in this world. He sounds like this very one who was chosen first to be the disciple of the Lord. And it says something to us today. The Lord does not write us off nope. because we're real people. He sees that we're That's real right. people. And while it's not his will for us to remain on a roller coaster of emotions... That's not what I'm advocating today. I'm not saying, hey, the Lord, you just go right ahead and go up and down and be on a roller coaster. The Lord loves that. No, there was transforming that happened. But God can work with even one that that's part of it. He doesn't leave us in that distress of a roller coaster that goes up and down. The Lord says, let me transform you. I can use you. And so he called Peter and told him, I'm going to make you a fisher of men even with all those character flaws. Because God can transform even what we consider Come to on. be our character flaws. Amen? Don't write yourself off. That's right. Jesus isn't writing you off this morning. Do not write yourself off. Derek Thomas said, God takes the broken and remakes, refashions, remolds, and restores to use our lives for his purpose. Just like he did in the life of Peter. He uses our experiences in life to make us empathetic right. in the feelings of others. Do you know one of the reasons that Jesus came to this earth is he wanted to know how we feel on this earth. Yes. That was part of it. And it's so clearly described in Isaiah 53, 3. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. The Lord desired to experience yes. all the feelings that we go through. Absolutely. He wanted to be acquainted with what it feels like. <coughs> he knows how we feel, and yet with his love, he transforms us. Is there somebody out there this morning who's saying, Yes, Jesus, Come transform on. me. Transform yes. my life. Amen. Plant your things, your deep things you inside of me. Woman. Plant those deep things that yes. need to go widest yes. in my sphere of yes. influence. God has given all of us a sphere of yes, influence. And I believe we would all raise our hands today and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, that is me. Transform us, God, just as you did in Peter's life. And allow us to be ones who will share your message. And what was the message? Coming to the second point. What was the message that Peter shared? The message that Peter shared is one that included the whole counsel of God's oh God. word. As he stood there before that crowd in Acts chapter 2, Jesus, uh, Peter didn't get up there and say, Well, listen, guys, I knew Jesus. He was the Messiah. He is the Messiah. And y'all murdered him. That is not what he did. He knew his audience. And he first addressed the reason why all these religious people. He wasn't just talking to people that had come to town for a party. No, no. He was talking to religious yes. people That's who right. had come for the Feast of Pentecost. Yes. And so he specifically talked about what they were there to celebrate. Right. Right off the bat, Peter starts including Old Testament prophecy from the book of Joel as mm -hmm. he says, this is, is that. that. He's like, you know why we've come here for Pentecost today? Yeah, this is what the prophet Joel talked about. It's what was written over there in the book of uh, Joel. But this is that. If you turn to Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 21, we hear the exact words Peter preached. He said, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all oh, people. Gosh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your Come young on. men Come will on. see visions. Your yes. old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit. And the word pour right there means he's going to pour it out like a torrential rain. In those days, they will prophesy. Hallelujah. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth below. Yes, amen. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. And the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the great coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Yes, and amen. everyone, 
everyone who calls on the, the name, name of, of the, the Lord, Lord will, will be, be saved. saved. Hallelujah. This great harvester, this great fisher of men, he's letting the people know that day that that very scripture Come on. that they all knew so well because they were religious yeah. people, he's saying this scripture has been fulfilled today. by Jesus today. He In is the Jesus. Messiah. This yes. is that. Peter is announcing the inauguration of the age of the Spirit and the age of grace. And it's for all people, for all flesh, no exclusions. Come on. I mean, he came in with that full message right off yes, the bat. Yes, he did. He didn't try, man, I better, I don't need to just jump right in and say that it is for men and women. Come on. Because that right there was a huge step to step out mm -hmm. and say that. No, he went with the full counsel. Yes. This is that. What was said back Come then, on. it's fulfilled in your midst today. And in verse 20, 22, he covers the incarnation of Jesus. In verse 23, he covers the crucifixion Come of on. Jesus. Hallelujah. And in verse 24, he covers what we talked about on Wednesday night. The resurrection, the resurrection. of Jesus. And yes. what the power of his resurrection meant for their lives that very day. Come on. You see, Peter preached Jesus. He did. He preached the gospel, the good news yes, of did. Jesus. Jesus was exalted in every message that Peter preached. Jesus was his message, and Peter was his messenger. Mm -hmm. And as we glean encouragement from the life of Peter today, it should be that our hearts and our mouths should always be filled with the Word of God. Yes. We should always Must. be exalting the Lord yes. because it's His Word that reaches out to hearts. Uh -huh. It's His Word that has the convicting power of the Holy Ghost that cut the heart. It cut to the heart those 3,000. Right. It wasn't Peter's words. No. It, it said those were spirit unctioned That's words right. that he spoke. And so when they came forth, they, those words demanded a response. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God, as those words were going out of Peter, they demanded a response in the hearts they were being planted right. into. And in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 and 38, it says, Now, when they heard Peter's words, they were cut, cut to, to the, the heart. heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Come on. Peter answered, Repent. And be baptized, every one of you. Do this in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Come on. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's exactly what happened. Those 3,000, we know in verse 41, they all gave their hearts to the Lord. They did. But again, it's not our words. It wasn't Peter's words that bring words salvation. The it's the words that our words can't cut to the heart. Mm -hmm. No. No. It's the word of the Lord. Yes. So church, our words, they only go so far. But the word of the Lord is a, is living and it's sharper than Come any two-edged yes. sword. Yes. Piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart, according to Hebrews 4, verse 12. So there's a work that the Lord wants to do in hearts, but he wants to fill your heart, fill your mouth with his word. Yes. So when it comes out of you, he does the cutting asunder. That's right. God hasn't called no. us to get in there and cut people up and slice up. Nope. I see some sin in your life. Let me chop that out right now. No, sirree. The word of God, the Holy right. Spirit is more than it's able to done. do his job. Yes. There's plenty for us to do, and that's why I want to look at the method that Peter used in being a great harvester and a fisherman of men. And I close with it this morning. We've looked at Peter the man. Not a perfect man, nope. but one who was willing to be transformed. Yes. We've looked at the message that he preached. He preached Jesus. Jesus. He preached the whole counsel of the Word of God. And what can we learn for him for our own lives concerning the harvest field of 2020? Because sometimes I think we look at the Bible and like, yeah, that was really good for back then. Mm -hmm. But this book is as current as today. That's right. This book is for today. It was for then. It was for yesterday. It's for today. And it'll be for tomorrow. That's right. The same power that is packed in the word that Peter preached is the yeah. same power that when we allow the Come Lord on. Jesus to transform our lives and it comes forth from us, he does his work by his Holy That's Spirit. That's right. Amen. You see, 
the love of love, the, the thing, the method that Peter had, he loved the Word of God. Loved it. He loved the Word of God. That is the method. We've got to become great lovers Amen. of the Word of God. He loved the whole counsel of the Word of God. He was able to quote from Joel because he had been listening whenever those scriptures had been quoted. And he was it's not because he was some great scholar. He didn't get the opportunity to go to Harvard University, but he got the opportunity to sit at the feet of John the Baptist. He yep. got the opportunity to sit at the feet of Jesus. And guess what? He was listening. He was taking in and soaking what he had learned. Because when you look at the book of Acts, it's divided into two categories. The first book, the first half of the book of Acts is all about Peter, this fisherman. Then you come to the second half of the book of Acts, it's all about Paul. These two men couldn't have been more different. different you got a fisherman, and then you've got this scholar who from basically the day he's born is sitting there at the feet of Gamaliel, and he's like in the best schools of the land. But do you know that over in Acts chapter 4, Peter was so full of the Word of God. It's chapter 4 or chapter 5, I believe chapter 4. He is so full of the Word of God that he has the religious leaders of that day scratching their heads saying, this guy knows the word as good as we do. That's right. I, I thought he was a fisherman. This fisherman. That right there should say, let me tell you what, you don't have to have gone to Harvard. You don't have to have gone to the greatest Bible college that ever existed in the whole wide world to become a student of the word of God and to develop a love for the word of God yes. and allow him to teach you. These people, you take, you. we've all got a Bible. Have you got a Bible at your house? Come on. Open up that Bible and ask the Lord. At, get a concordance as well. Yes. Ask the Lord to start revealing to you. You can learn. If Peter was able to learn, we all are able to Amen. learn from the Word of God. But we got to start loving the Word of God. We've got to start loving what His Word says. You need to speak life over yourself. If you feel like, I, I just, I don't understand the Bible. I don't think I can get it. Yes, you can. Yes. You start speaking life over yourself. I come into agreement with you Absolutely. right now. As you get in the Word of God, He's going to start revealing to you more and more. Yes. He's going to start showing you things, and lights are going to start going off, and yes. you're going to be like, wow. You need to be able to fill yourself with the Word of God, because whenever you do, then you've got something from the Word of God to share. Mm -hmm. So when the Lord does put that person in your path, you can pray that prayer just like Nehemiah prayed over in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11. God, give me success today. Right. Grant me favor as I'm sharing your favor. word today. He will do it for you, Lord. He will do it for you, church. Yes. The Lord will do it for you. Yes, he will. And Peter was very specific in his message that day. He knew his audience. Mm -hmm. Don't, if you're talking, don't, don't try to, you know who you're talking to. That's right. Yeah. Allow the Spirit of the Lord and the discerning that He gives That's right. to show you. Pray those prayers and say, Father, what should I share with them today? Don't share everything you know. The Lord might have a specific thing He wants you to share with that person that day. That's a fact. Be sensitive. The Lord's going to lead and guide you with the right words to share as a fisherman of men. But we got to stay in the good book. To be able That's to right. give something from the good book. Stay We've in. got to love it to be able to share his to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and to be in his harvest field. Yes. There's a place for everybody. Maybe you're not, okay, like I said earlier, maybe you're not the greatest speaker. Like you mm -hmm. that just that just chokes you, you just you know. Okay. Like I said, in the field, in the harvest field of the Lord, there are those who plant the seed. But that seed doesn't grow if they're not no, those that no. are also those They've who water, water the seed. That's right. Then there are those who do come and harvest yes. the seed. There is a place for everyone in the harvest field of the Lord. Amen. There is a place for your gift to be used. Yes. Don't try to force yourself to be something you're not. But then again, also, don't fail to yield your, yourself and allow the Lord to transform you into what you know He Amen. wants. Amen. Yes. And that's who I'm talking to today, those who want to be transformed, those who desire to be a part of that harvest field mm -hmm. and to gather in and to share the beautiful message of the Lord, those who want to reach out and call people to come home, those who want to be in the harvest field, sowing the seeds, watering the seeds, be <coughs> part of the great harvest yes. of the Lord. 
I'm talking to you today. Those there, those of you who are like, oh, I just need the Lord. I, I got away from God. I need to come back. I need, need the back. Lord yeah. to restore, to remold, to refashion me. We want to pray for you today. Yes. If you don't know the Lord, Peter gives great hope. For anybody who just feels like they have blown it, it's over. That's right. God is saying through the life of Peter, absolutely not. Come on. I knew you would blow it from the day I called you. Yes. He's not about that. It's not that we're trying to live a life where we're blowing it constantly, but no. come on. Can we put that. our lives in the hand of the transformer? In, yes. So for the one today that doesn't know the Lord and you're just running, you're saying, God, please come into my heart. God, please come into my heart. Please forgive me of all my sins. Please forgive me of all my sins. Please turn my life around. Please turn my life around. Remake me. Remake me. Refashion me. Refashion me. Remold me. Remold me. Make me a useful tool for you. Make me a useful tool for you. I give you my life, Lord. I give you my life, From Lord. this day forward, God. From this day forward. Give me a love for your word. Give me a love for your word. And Father, this right now, we are praying. We are praying over the body of Christ that there is a new infusion of a love for the word of God unlike any other time in the history of celebration. A deep abiding love for the word of God. The word that won't turn to the left or to the right but that stays straight forward with faces set like flint only a Obeying the word of God. Only obeying and God's Father word. God, for those who are desiring to go greater in your harvest field, God, there's a stirring and yes. a passion. They're evangelists yes. right here at celebration. There are, they're Lord. evangelists that are being ministered to yes. right here today as they're hearing your word. And they're saying, Cross I the identify. Past. I identify yes, with Lord. that thing inside of Peter. I identify with what yes. he did when he stood up and he shared your word. Yes. Father God, we thank you for the boldness of the Holy Hallelujah. Ghost that doesn't bypass spending the time in your word That's right. to be able to have something from your word yes. to share. Yes. But Lord God submits to that transforming yes, process, submits to the plans that you have yes. for our lives today. We thank you for thank great you, Lord. transformation. Transformation in, in lives. Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. What an awesome praise word. The praise name of God. The Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank oh, you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God's moving in hearts and lives, and I want to tell you what. God. Hey, Norma. Hey, Walt. Absolutely. Good hey, guys. Good to see y'all. God will go to the nth degree to do what he wants to do and speak to our hearts. Amen. I was telling my wife this morning. Uh, I, my message was all done. I had everything in the computer. Oh, yeah. uh, I had uh, oh, all my yeah. scripture. Been saved probably 10 or 15, 20 times as the message was being put together. And um, I went in to pull up, and the way that uh, the software works on the compu my computer is for years now, I've been able to go in. If I wanted to look at it in this translation, just click it, and you turn on that translation, go back, click it again. And every single scripture that I clicked on, it would not go to another translation. Those scriptures kept going back to one particular translation. Mm -hmm. And it kept going to one particular scripture that at that time, that scripture wasn't even on my message. God, wow. through every one of these scriptures, yes. God was taking it back yes. to this one particular passage. Yes. And I've been asking the Lord all morning, Lord, is that passage something you're revealing to me or is it something you're revealing to the body of Christ? But he hasn't showed me that. He may show me in the middle of this message and we'll go with it if that's what he does. Because the Lord, he gives things for us individually but he also gives things for the corporate body. Mm -hmm. And this particular word is something that I know I've been praying about, uh, but the Lord hadn't shown me this passage of Scripture concerning it. But I want to take you and share with you because God mm -hmm. is doing, he, he moves us from faith to faith. He moves us from uh, where we are yes. constantly. He wants us to grow and move forward. Now, I believe with all of my heart that the Lord, he's got his body at such a place that 
The reliance upon him is everything we have to have in this life. Uh, Our reliance on this world, our reliance upon the things of this world, uh, they're, they're not there. And I want to share a couple of scriptures with you this morning because uh, this is where God's been leading and guiding me uh, for years. Amen. But I found over the past several months the Lord taking me deeper and deeper into this. Amen. The book of Hebrews, if you will. The book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Uh, and a lot of you who, are, who have been in the Lord a while, oh, we're going to the faith chapter. We're going to the faith chapter. Amen. We're going to the faith chapter, absolutely. But there's something that we have to see here and something that we have to grab a hold of. First of all, in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, I want to read this to you because I've been meditating on this for quite a while, as I have years and years ago, uh, but the Lord's had me back in here again. Uh, Out of the Amplified Version, now faith is the assurance the confirmation, the title deed, I like that title deed, of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not yet see, and the conviction of their reality, their faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Mm. Mm. For by faith, trust, and holy fervor Born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. By faith, we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put into order, equipped for their intended purpose. Stop there. Intended for their intended purpose the ages that were equipped for their particular purpose for that particular time that particular order they were ordained for that you and i are living in a time and a framework yes we're living in the time of the gentiles that's what peter was declaring yeah now peter he was he was one hundred percent Jew. Yes. Okay. He didn't realize what he was speaking exactly <laughs> when he proclaimed out of the book of Joel, yes. chapter two. Yes. He was going to face it pretty soon. When yes, he, got he was. To when he got to Cornelius, <laughs> he was going to face it. Oh yeah. But he was de- making a declaration. Yes. And on that day. Yes. The church. <laughs> now. There were 120 that were in the upper room when Jesus came and revealed himself. The disciples we know were there. Others were there as well. And he said, see my hands? See my side? Thomas, of course, had to touch both. But we understand they became born again. He breathed on them. And then he was with them for 40 days. We understand that. And then the last days they were praying and seeking the Lord. But when Peter stood up, under the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost and said, these men are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel. He was declaring the time of the Gentiles had begun for all men, all women. And he was going to have to grow into the fullness of that message. He was going to have to grow into it. that's what the Word of God does. Absolutely. He was declaring something that he didn't even yet totally, he 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 had processed it all himself. Yes, and that's the thing I'm dealing with, what the Lord showed me this morning. Lord, is it something, I I understand parts of it, but it's something I've got to grow grow in so that I can then share it. So I want us to understand here that he's speaking and he's talking about and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God, verse 3, so that what we see was made not out of the things which are visible. So what God is doing in this day and in this age and where we are at right now, God is not doing what he did yesterday. God is not doing what he did two days ago. 
God's not doing yeah. what he did last week. Yeah. We get so consumed with, we need to do this. Yeah. We need to do that. Yeah. We need to do what God says do. Yeah. We need to hear what God says hear. Amen. We need to be so attentive to the voice of God yes. that we are in that season at that moment of yes. the season. The seasons are changing so rapidly. We yes. live in a, one of the most beautiful places, I believe, in the world. Oh, we do. We live where we have spring. Yes. We have fall. We have spring, summer, fall, and winter. Yes. We have all, the, all seasons. the seasons. Not like we did when I was a child because they've been changing. But we're living now in a season of change yes. for the body of Christ. Yes, we are. Yes. It's, a, it's a question of whether we will move into the change oh, for the body of Christ. Oh, Lord, Come further if, with me, if you will. Yes. Verse, verse 4, prompted, actuated by faith, Abel brought God a better and more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, because of which it was testified of him yeah. that he was righteous, that he was upright, and in right standing with God, and God bore witness by accepting and acknowledging his gift. And though he died, yet through the incident, he is still speaking. Understand something. God's intention was not for Cain to kill Abel. No. It wasn't his intention. God saw what the sacrifice was going to have to be for mankind. God saw that it had to be the sacrifice of a lamb. Yes. Cain's sacrifice... It was a good sacrifice. It was the sacrifice of the earth. He was bringing the fruit of his labors and sacrificing them to God. He was, he was basically, he was tithing. He was yes. doing what God intended, but the sacrifice that was acceptable, first and foremost, was the sacrifice of blood, which had to come through Abel and Cain got so offended that God didn't accept his sacrifice, he killed Abel. Yes. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you what. We in the body of Christ, we must do what God has called us to do as individuals. Yes. He's given gifts. The gifts and the calling of God are beyond repentance. Amen. God does not take away the gifts. No. God does not take away the calling. Sometimes people walk away from the gift. Sometimes people walk away from the calling. Yeah. But God doesn't take it. We yeah. must understand that we must be in what God is telling us to be in. We must be doing what God tells us to do. Amen, amen. Now, the thing, I want you to look further because there's a couple of things, and then I'm going to jump back and pick up where God has us. It says that, uh, that his blood is still speaking or his sacrifice is still speaking. Because of faith, Enoch was called up and transferred to heaven so that he did not have a glimpse of death. And he was not found because God had translated him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received testimony still on record that he had pleased and been satisfactory to God. I'm telling you, it is appointed unto every man or woman once to die. Now, there is going to be a rapture of the church. Hallelujah. But the rapture of the church is going to happen to a people who have already died. You go, yeah. no, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought that first those who are asleep in Christ are going to rise, then those of us who remain. Yes, yes, but the ones who are going to be called up that remain, they will have died the death to self. Yes. They will be so living for the Lord yes. that they will have crucified the flesh. As Paul the Apostle spoke of in Galatians 2 and 20, I've been crucified with Christ, but yet I live. But the life I live, I live yes. by faith in the Son of God yes. who gave himself yes. for me. Amen. They will have died the first death. Enoch yes. has not yet tasted yes. death. That's right. Enoch will be one of the two witnesses. Elijah will be the other witness. Yeah. They will preach at the Wailing Wall for three and a half years. Amen. Day and night. It will drive the Antichrist 
nuts Amen. because there will be signs, there will be wonders. The Word of God, one of them will be preaching 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Yeah. Somebody's going to be preaching. Yeah. Enoch and Elijah both will die. They will be struck down, but they will be raised from the dead Hallelujah. by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. 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 And it says here in verse number 6, But without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory yes. to Him. Yes. For whoever would come near to God necessarily believe that God exists and that He is the rewarder of those who earnestly and diligently seek Him out. Amen. My wife told the story of the pastor a few weeks ago in Enterprise, Alabama. His son, who is... Uh, mature. He is a man. He's and, in his 20s. I yeah, in his 20s. Early 20s. He and his son had been out hunting. Yeah. His son took a path. His dad took another path. Exactly. The son was lost through the evening. Yes. The son wasn't heard from until 930. But I want you to know, the father, he went out looking for the son. Yes, he did. But the son was seeking what he had been taught. Yes, he did. His father had taught him to go in a certain direction. His father had taught him to follow the fence line. Yes. His father had taught him to yes. know where the sun was. Yes. So he headed in directions, headed and found the fence line, walked the fence line, and then he diligently sought yes. after what he had been taught. Yes, yes. You and I, let me tell you what, we, we garner, we cherish the things that have been taught to us yes. through this life. Yes. But these things through this life will only take us so far. Yeah. What the Lord teaches us. We are to sit at the feet of Jesus. Amen. We are to sit at the feet of his word. We are to sit and hear Absolutely. and not just hear. We are to obey what God yes. says. Yes. We, God is a rewarder of them who diligently, diligently, seek. say it with me, diligently, diligently seek, seek Him. The Lord. Amen. We are to diligently seek Him. Now, as I, the Lord was speaking and showing me these things, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me is He showed me that He is shifting. There is this shift that's taking place. Okay. Because we in the body of Christ, let me tell you what, we... We, we've gotten a little carnal in our belief. We've gotten a little carnal. We, the day we got born again, the day each one of us received Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, our lives changed. No longer, we weren't the same people. Old things passed away. Everything became new. Amen. Now, we must understand that he told us in Jeremiah 29 and 11 and 12, he said, I will give you a hope. Yes. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Amen. Our hope, we have a hope of glory. Yes. I know that one day, if Jesus tarries, this life will come to an end. I'm believing that we're going in the rapture. Hallelujah. Me and my sweetie, we're out of here together. <laughs> I'm believing that. But Amen. we have a hope. We have a future. Amen. But the body of Christ, especially in Western civilization, we keep living in the future. We keep looking to the future. We keep going, oh, I'm going to do this at this time. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to do this at this time. Oh, two more weeks in vacation. Oh, next week we're going to do this. Next week we're going to do that. A month from now we're going to do this. A year from now we're going to do that. We we live in the future. But Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, speaking in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, God is telling us, now, faith, right yes. now, yes. Yes. night, right now. We God is telling us in the body of Christ, quit yes. living in the future. You know where your future Amen. is. Amen. Your future is in a kingdom. Amen. Your future is in a city. 
that, yeah. that is ruled by Jesus Christ, the righteous one. Yeah. We're going to live in walls. He didn't go to prepare a little cabin in the corner of glory. He went to prepare a city whose builder and maker is almighty God. Amen. And he's given us housing. He's given us mansions in that city. Amen. I've shared with you the size of the city of the holy city, Jerusalem, and the walls. And we understand that they're huge. Yes. We have a yes. future. We have a hope. But we must live this day. Yes. 11 15 2020 will only be one time Amen. in history. Amen. One time live the will this day, this day exist. Amen. So now faith. Yes. Yes. 11 15 2020 yes. faith. Yes. See, the faith it takes for today is going to be different than tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow, faith is going to take me another place. Yeah. But he's telling us to live trusting, relying on him and him alone. Amen. He is our source. Every good, every pleasing, every perfect gift comes from the Father of light. Amen. It comes to us. And God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Amen. You say, well, pastor, I've heard this message. I, I've heard these things spoken. No, you had not heard this. It's today. It's today. Today is a new day. How do we live today? I believe that what lies ahead for the body of Christ is something that's different than what lied ahead for the body of Christ in 99 when celebration began. Yes. Why? Because we're in the last of the last days. Amen. We're there. Amen. We're seeing prophecy fulfilled yes. each and every day. Yes. We must understand we must grab a hold and live by it and I want you to go to the book of Romans you need and every one of us need to we need to sit down Amen. and we need to get alone with God and alone with God as long as it takes and we need to remember who we are in Christ Amen I want to share several things with you. The Lord was reminding me. Uh, I was going through a little battle the other day. Well, even last night. Uh, today, thank God, I'm, I'm doing better. But uh, I had this tremendous pain that was, uh, it was right in my shoulder blades. Yeah. I mean, here the Lord gives me this word last week, but I had this pain in my shoulder blades. And um uh, uh, I think it was from sitting at the computer and, and working and studying. And, and the Lord started speaking to me and he said, Son, now see, that's a word that I didn't have a whole lot of reference to when I gave my heart to the Lord in 1984. I, I had heard a father call me son, but my dad... He worked so hard for our family that my dad wasn't there. And when I heard God speak to me in 1984, on February 26th, and he called me son, Amen. it grabbed my attention. Amen. In the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, The 14th verse, it says, For as many that as are led by the Spirit of God. It didn't say, for as many that believe. It says, for as many as are led Amen. by the Spirit of God. Amen. They are the sons and daughters of God. Amen. For you've not received the spirit of bondage again, God hasn't called us to bondage to fear. That's right. It's a bondage. It's a spirit. Yes. 
God hasn't given us the spirit of love or fear. He's given us life, mm -hmm. love. Yes. He's given us a powerful gift. Yes. He's he but you have received the spirit of adoption. Yes. Of adoption. Whereby you cry, Abba, Daddy. Amen. We are children of the living God. Amen. We are children. The creator of the universe. Yes, I have an earthly father. He's in, in heaven with God. But I have an earthly father. Mm -hmm. But I have a father that is the creator of this universe. Amen. I have a daddy. And last night when he spoke to me, he said, son. And I didn't respond, yes, God. I said, yes, Father. Amen. See, a relationship works in both directions. Amen. Amen. He loves me so much, he calls me son, that I should love him so much, I respond to him as Father. Yes. So I encourage you, every one of us, right at the very top of our list, we ought to write down that we're children. I'm a child of the living God. Amen. Amen. It comes further. But not only am I a child of the living God, look here in 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. I never have to question if I'm born again. Amen. God's Spirit bears witness to my spirit. I know I'm born again. Amen. I know I'm going to heaven. I see, I'm not going to live any different. I'm not going to run away from home. I'm not going to run away from my Heavenly Father. No. I'm going to live for Him. I love living in Daddy's house. I love living under Daddy's arm of, of protection. I love living under Daddy's Word. Yeah. So, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God. And if children then heirs. Yes. Heirs of God. Heirs of the Father. And joint heirs. Yes. Whoa, not just an heir. Uh, Daddy isn't going to say, you know, son, I love you. And because I love you, I'm going to give you this little promise box. That's your gift. If he gave me just that, I'd go, thank you, Daddy, because it's filled with your word. Thank you. But he says, I'm not just an heir. A I'm a joint heir with Christ. Amen. If so, be that we suffer with him. Suffer with him how? Suffer the suffering of we're separated from the Father right now naturally. We're still walking upon this earth. And walking upon this earth is going to bring about its own situations and circumstances. Inside spiritually, we're longing to be with Daddy. Inside spiritually, we should be longing to be uh, with Him in Heaven. That's where we should be. We should be living there always. But the Scripture says, so, if so be that we suffer with Him that we may also glorif be glorified together. So we're joint heirs with Christ. Thank you, Lord. My Thank Father you, Lord. built the universe. Yes. My Father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Hallelujah. 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 Absolutely. As, as Brother Donald quoted, I used the scripture the other day out of Psalm. I've never, once I was young, but now I'm older. Uh -huh. you know, once I was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous never, forsaken never, never. or God's seed begging bread. Amen. My daddy isn't going to tell me, nope, tough luck. My daddy's going to take care of me. Amen. My daddy's going to take care of my household. Amen. My daddy's going to take care of us. If he's got to put manna outside of our door, daddy will take care of us. Amen. If he's got to bring quail and then fall on, a, on our front porch he and we, we have to pluck them and children. cook them, he takes care of his children. Absolutely. 
He loves us Absolutely. with an everlasting love. But the devil, uh-huh. he's a thief. Yeah. He comes to yeah. steal, yeah. to kill, yeah. to destroy. Yeah. He wants to tell you you're not worth it. Oh. He wants to tell you, you don't deserve it. None of us deserve it. But this is what my Father has said about me. This is what my Father says about my bride. This is what my Father says about you. you. Amen. Amen. We're children of the living God. Yes, we are. Let me give you another one. We are, go to 1 Peter. You know this scripture. But we're going to use it again. Man. Because there's these three things you have to have as foundation yes. in your life. Yes. Second Peter chapter number two. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to this. Verse, Verse seven. seven. To you then who believe, who adhere to and trust in and rely on, that's faith. Adhere to, trust in, rely on him, Amen. that's faith. Yes. Is the preciousness, but for those who uh, disbelieve, it is true. The very stone which the builders rejected has become the main cornerstone, and a stone that will cause stumbling, and a rock that will give men offense. We are living in a world, let me tell you what. The yes. Word of God is offensive yes. to this world. Yes, it is. The Word of God offends them. Yes. You just go out here and say, God bless you to somebody. Somebody that's being angry and mean. And let me tell you what. The seed of the word will be planted. And it will produce what it will produce. Amen. But in Peter and James and John's day. let me And Andrew's day. Let me tell you what. That seed of God's word was rejected. Because it was a stone that the builders rejected. They, and it became the capstone. The cornerstone. It became what was Needed yeah. for the foundation. Yeah. Let's go further. Offensive, they stumble because they disobey and disbelieve God's word as those who reject him and were destined, appointed to do so. But you are a chosen generation. Amen. Woo. Yes. yes. We are a chosen generation. Yes. yes. A royal priesthood. Yes. That word royal there means kingly. You and I just aren't children of God. You and I aren't just heirs and joint heirs with Christ. You and I are a kingly. Remember King David, he, because he was a warrior, he had no place in building the temple of God because he was a warrior king. But you and I, because of who lives in us, yes. We are kingly. We are a kingly priesthood. We are a royal priesthood. <coughs> that is a <coughs> priestly order. It is sacerdotal. It is a sacerdotal. It is a sacred order. Not everybody is a royal priest. Everyone is invited to become Amen. a royal priest, Amen. but not everybody accepts the offer. The king could invite you yes. to an audience. Yes. He sends out an invitation to come and have audience, to be in his presence. And to be in a king's presence was of the highest honor. Amen. And Almighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ, he has given a request for everyone on this planet to have audience with him. Anytime, day or night, 24 hours a day, 365 a year, Amen. you and I have audience with with the king. Amen. You and I have a right and a privilege to go into the throne of the universe Amen. and meet 
with the King of Kings, the Lord of glory. Amen. He's invited us and given us right passage. Thank you, Father. And we know when we go in how we are to enter. We know that. We enter humbly. We enter meekly. We enter going before him, bowing before him, declaring his awesome power. Those three things are foundational to living in now faith, to living in the faith that we need for 11-15-2020. Amen. The faith you will need and I will need every day going forward until he comes. But there's an added thing that the Lord's speaking to me, and uh, either today or tomorrow I'm going to start doing this again. I had done it at one time. I had sat down, and the Lord told me, he said, write out how I have revealed myself to you. Amen. I encourage you, write down how, and it may just be a one-line sentence. If you can remember the date, put the date there. But remind Write down, he wants you, he wants to make sure we remember what he has done for us. Amen. Well, pastor, that would take a notebook. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I believe we're living in such a day that we need to be able to have reference. Yes. We need to be able to go back and call to remembrance. Yes. What the Lord has done. Yes. Is there anybody out there that when you got saved, the Lord delivered you? Yes. Don't ever lose sight Amen. of how he delivered you. Amen. Is there anyone out there that God has healed your body? Hallelujah. Don't ever lose sight of the healing power of Jesus. Amen. Has there, is there anyone out there that you've walked and you felt like you were in a wilderness, but God revealed himself yes. in the wilderness? Yes. Don't ever forget it. Amen. We must remember every place in us. We must call to remembrance. I encourage you to write it down so when the enemy comes in like a flood, the word of God, the testimony of who he is, you're bringing it and saying, oh, no, 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 no. I know the Lord that Absolutely. delivered me. Absolutely. I know that on this date, the Lord delivered me from this. Yes. I know that on this date, the Lord healed me. Yes. I know that on this date, the Lord brought me back from death. Yes. I know that on the, are you understanding what yes. I'm saying? Yes. And, the, and I'll close with this. I don't know that the Lord's going to have me share uh, the, the thing he, he showed me this morning right now. But I want you to go to the book of Psalms. Amen. The book of Psalms. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Psalm 135 and Psalm 136 is a remembrance it's a remembrance. Let me just read a couple of verses to you. In Psalm 135, it says, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him. O oh, you servants of the Lord, you who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. For the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name. For he is gracious and lovely. For the Lord has chosen the descendants of Jacob for himself, Israel for his peculiar possess possession and treasure. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatever the Lord pleases, that has he done in the heavens and on earth, Amen. in the seas and all deeps, who causes the vapors to rise for the earth to the from the ends of the earth, who makes lightnings for the rain, who brings the wind out of his storehouse, who smote the firstborn of Egypt, brought of man and beast, who sent signs and wonders into the midst of you, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and all of his servants, who smote the nations and many great and slew mighty kings. 
uh, Sion, king of the Amorites, O king of Basham, and all the kingdoms of Cana, the Lord gave their land as a heritage, and a heritage to the house Israel, his people. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Hallelujah. Your fame, O Lord, throughout Hallelujah. all ages. For the Lord will judge and vindicate his people, Amen. and he will delay his judgments, manifesting his righteousness and mercy, and take into favor his servants, those who meet his terms of separation unto him. Listen to this. God is declaring, when we declare, oh, you are such a holy and righteous God. Yes. He's hold, he is withholding right now his judgment yeah. and his mercy is with this world. Amen. But he is withholding judgment upon this earth. He is withholding it. For this time. Because he loves this earth so much. He wants them to come to salvation. The way that Andrew and Peter and James and John. Pastor Vanji, Pastor Rocky. Yourself. The way that we came to the Lord. Amen. He wants his mercy to endure forever to this world. Amen. But this world keeps denying. This world keeps declaring. There is no God. This world keeps saying. We will be a God unto ourselves. Amen. Remember in Timothy, in the last days, yes. they will become lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Yes. But God promised, he says, just as it was with Janus and Jambres, those were the two, remember, they brought up the serpents. Yes. And Moses sat down Aaron's rod, and Aaron's rod became a great serpent and swallowed the two serpents of Janus and Jambres. It says, but the evilness of Janus and Jambres, it will be made known to all. Amen. The world will know of this evil. Amen. And God right now is withholding judgment upon this world. Yeah. He is bottling up our tears. Amen. He Amen. knows every tear we shed. Amen. He knows how we cry out to him yeah. for souls. Yes. Souls. It's all about souls. Amen. You may be out there today. You, you can go to chapter 136 and read about the love of the Lord and his mercies enduring forever. Amen. But I want you to understand something. God loves us with an everlasting love. Yes. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I grew up in a church. I grew up in a church where I didn't hear of salvation. I grew up in a church that it was never told to me I had to be born again. The convicting power of the Holy Ghost is real. Amen. God draws us by his spirit. He loves us with an everlasting love. Thank you, Lord. I ran from God for 26 years. But on February the 26th, 1984, he found me. Hallelujah. He came to me that day and he said, your days of running are over. Amen. Amen. Don't run from me, run to me. Yes. And I ran to him. And my life hasn't been the same. It was changed. Amen. I left behind in one day being a cocaine addict. I left behind in one day being an alcoholic. I stepped into the freedom of Jesus Christ. He took my sins. And all of us have sinned. And he wants to take your sins. He took the punishment that I deserved. And I won't go into the things. But all of us deserve punishment. All of us deserve death. Amen. But he took my punishment upon yes. himself. Yes, yes. He took upon himself 39 lashes plus one more. Yes. He hung on a cross that was intended for me. And he died on that cross in my place. 
He says that if we'll confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord, we'll believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we'll be born again. Hallelujah. He was taken off of that cross and he was placed in a tomb that wasn't even his own tomb to fulfill prophecy. Yes. Said the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. It was given by a man, a believer named Joseph of Arimathea. He gave his tomb. He gave the spices. He gave everything intended for his burial to go upon Jesus. And he was buried in that tomb, and that tomb was sealed. But on the third day, he rose from the dead. <laughs> he showed himself to believers. He showed himself to James and John and Peter and Andrew and the other disciples. He breathed on them. They worshipped him. He breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit, and they were born again. Right now, you feel the tug of the Holy Ghost in your heart. And he's saying, come to me, son. Come to me, daughter. Yes. I love you. Yes. You don't need to run anymore. Don't run from me. Amen. Run to me. Amen. So right now, we're going to pray. Amen. And I want you to ask Jesus into your heart. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I know you're the Son of God. I know you're the Son of God. I know. I know. You came to this world. You came to this world. To die. To die. For the sins of the world. For the sins of the world. But you came to die also for me. But you came to also die for me. And right now, Jesus. Right now, Jesus. I recognize. I recognize. You took my punishment. You took my punishment. Upon yourself. Upon yourself. And you gave your life. And you gave your life. For me. For me. I ask you, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord Jesus. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. I know you were buried. I know you were buried. And on the third day you rose from the dead. And on the third day you rose from the dead. And right now, Jesus. And right now, Jesus. I rise. I rise. In a new life. In a new life. Born again. Born again. By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. And I am changed. And I'm changed. And from this day forward. And from this day forward. Every day. Every day. I will live for you. I will live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What an awesome word, honey. What a beautiful word from the Lord for, for us today. And for those of you that accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior this morning, we rejoice. The angels in heaven are rejoicing yes. with you. If you don't have a Bible, please let us know. We want to get a Bible for you and get that into Amen. your hands. Uh, as I've shared with you several times now, my mom always referred to the Bible as the Lord's letter of uh, love letter to us made up of 66 books. That's right. And so you definitely want to have a Bible and you want to start loving the Word of God. Amen. And he's going to start impor imparting things to you from his word. Get involved in our discipleship class with yes. Larry and Christina Foy. Definitely get involved in all the classes that are offered here at Celebration on our Facebook page. I can promise you, you will be encouraged and uplifted and part of a beautiful family yes. of the Lord that Amen. will reach out and embrace you. And be there for you. Amen. 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 Jean, so good to see you today. Patsy and Harmon, so good to see y'all. Uh, saw that y'all were able to come on. Tommy came on. Missy, so good that you were able to join us today. We're just so glad uh, for everybody that, yes, that was able to be a part of this service. We're going to take communion. And if you need a moment to go get a piece of bread, a cracker, um, some juice, some... Uh, if you don't have those things readily available, even if you just have some water and a cracker or something, we want to take communion. And as we take communion today, honey, I've got to testify something that, oh, we've got to get our communion. <laughs> something that we shared on Wednesday night concerning healing. My husband had told, had shared that for those of you that need healing, lay hands on yourself we That's encourage right. you to speak over yourself as speak we take communion body. we're honoring what the lord jesus did on the cross for us and you mentioned part of it a minute ago when you talked about those 40 39 mm -hmm. plus one stripes yes for our healing yes 
You talked about how last week you had earlier in the week had been battling sinus and you laid hands on mm -hmm. your sinuses and they were healed. Yes. So then we shared that Wednesday night and Thursday morning I woke up and this side of, of for me, my sinuses, mm -hmm. on this side, just, I'm like, what in the world? And I waited till the afternoon. Isn't it terrible? Even after just having spoken that Wednesday night. Oh, yeah. But when Thursday afternoon, I said, no more. No. Nope. And I laid hands on your sinus. Right here. And I'm telling you, cleared up right there. Praise God. And has not been another bit of trouble. Amen. Last night, we laid hands on your shoulder, mm -hmm. right, uh, your, right where you were hurting. Yeah. And you've just testified that the Lord healed you. He healed me. So when we're talking about and honoring with communion, Yes. The healing power that flows through the blood of Jesus. Amen. We're not talking just about something that was done way back then and isn't applicable to our lives today. You talk for us to live in the now faith. The now faith. Well, if you need healing now, as we take communion this morning, you, you lay healed. hands on whatever part of your <coughs> body you're wanting that touch in. And <coughs> we're agreeing with you now. Amen. That the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to flow in your body. Yes. And the Lord woke me up with a word this morning for somebody watching today. Depression has been trying to grab a hold of you mm -hmm. and pull you under. And it's at the beginning stages of it because you felt it before and you know what's happening. And the Lord says, come out. Come out. Right now. You're not going back down in that hole. Yes. He didn't prepare that hole for you. No. Nope. And he's telling you right now, I'm lifting that spirit of heaviness. That's right. You're free. Right off of you. Yes. You're freed from it once yes. and for all. Amen. You're not going back down into that pit. No. It was a specific word for somebody feeling clouds of depression trying to gloom around them. And you know the feeling and you know how it begins. And the Lord's saying, arrest it arrest today. It. Tell it it's got to be gone. It's commanded to be gone yes. away from you by the Lord Jesus Christ. And all you've got to do is come, agree, come into agreement with That's his right. word right now. That's right. Right now. Right now. In the and name you're going to feel that thing to spell. Yeah. You're not going down in that pit. God's got too much now faith that he needs That's you right. walking in. He's got too many people he needs you yes. reaching right now. And the time is short and the devil's not taking you down. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. And we come against the spirit of fear. God hasn't given us a spirit of fear but a power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. And I thank you, Lord, that people are lifted off of them. It's broken away from them. It must flee in the name of Jesus. God hasn't given us a spirit of heaviness. No. Put on the garment of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you for it, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In this month full of gratitude, Father God, yes. our utmost gratitude yes, Lord. needs to be stirred towards Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Above all, and we are so grateful for so much, but Father, yes. we are grateful for you. Yes, our we Lord are. And Savior. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. 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 The Apostle Paul, the scripture tells us that he said that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, the Lord Jesus, he took bread and he broke it. Amen. And when he broke it, he lifted it up amen. and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. Yes, Father. So, Lord Jesus, right now we come before the throne of grace. Yes. We thank you for your broken body. We thank you for the sacrifice that you gave of yourself for us. Amen. We thank you that you were wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement that is upon you brings us peace. And it's by your stripes that we're healed. Yes. So as we partake of this bread, we do it in remembrance of you. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And in the same manner, the Lord Jesus lifted up the cup. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, this cup, it's a new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat of it, you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. And Lord Jesus, as we partake of the cup, we thank you that nothing can wash away our sins. Nothing. Except the blood, the blood of, Jesus. of Jesus. You are the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. Yes, Lord. And you gave your life freely. Yes. And the enemy, the enemy of our yes. souls, yes. is defeated yes. by your victory at the cross yes. and your resurrection. Thank you, Father. So we declare right now that you alone are worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. Yes, you are. And we Lord. drink of this cup. Thank In you, Jesus' Father. name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank, Thank you, you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. So rich and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me. Thy great salvation, so rich and free. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Hallelujah. We Thank worship you, you Father. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. For your beautiful salvation. Yes. Amen. Amen. Father, as we're lifting up our tithes and our offerings to you, yes. my wife and I, we wish to also give thanks to you yes, we do. for Celebration Family yes, Worship we Center. Do, Father. We thank you for the recognition that they've paid towards us yes, Jesus. during this time of pastor appreciation. Thank you, Lord. And we pray your blessings Pour upon every household, every blessings. prayer that's Lord, been prayed for family, us, God. every card that's been given. Yes. Yes, Every gift. Yes. Lord Jesus, we pray manifold blessings. Yes, yes. We pray you would throw open the windows of heaven Hallelujah. and it would come back to them some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty fold. Hallelujah. But Father, you would pour back into the bosom Amen. of your people. Amen. And I thank you that's happening. Thank you. Lord. Now, Father, we also thank you as we pray for our tithes and our offerings. Yes. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You came, you took the cross you bore its shame and its guilt yes we thank you that you've destroyed the law of sin and death yes. and you've made us alive in christ jesus yes. we thank you we can cry abba father Hallelujah. and you've made us joint heirs in your inheritance Amen. and father the nations of this earth belong to you yes. in revelation chapter 5 verse 10 it says that have men and women from every nation tongue tribe and kindred they're worshiping you in spirit and yes. truth. It says it in Revelation 10 as well. Hallelujah. And Father God, we declare blessings yes. to the nations. Yes. We call them to the kingdom. Thank if you, that's God. what heaven looks and sounds like, oh, yes. that's what we the church ought to look and sound Hallelujah. like. So we call to the four corners of the earth. We call to the north, the south, the, the east, east, and the west. And the, the four west. winds of the earth. Release the lost. Hallelujah. Release those that are being saved. Amen. And they come to your kingdom. Amen. And they come with glad and sincere hearts. Yes, yes. They have a home at celebration. Thank you, Lord. We grow in the things yes. of your kingdom together. 
And Father God, you accomplish all you desire to do Hallelujah. in us and through us. Hallelujah. And we will lead souls to your kingdom. Yes. We will declare the greatness of our God. We will be in the harvest field. Planting seed, yes. watering seed, whether harvesting the ripping seed. Ripping up the sods, whether it's planting the seed, watering. You give yes, the harvest. God, you have you a are the Lord of the harvest. All of us there, God. We pray for a third great awakening yes, in our do. nation. Yes. Lord, we pray for President Donald Trump. Vice President Mike Pence. We pray for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We pray for all those in the Congress, the Cabinet, the Supreme Court. Yes. All those in the Senate. Yes. Lord Jesus, all those that will be taking offices. All those, Lord Jesus, that are still in office at this time. We pray for those on a state level, Governor Cooper, all the other governors, Governor elect. We pray for those in local authorities. We pray them in their households. Thank you, Jesus. They be born again. Amen. They be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Thank the you. word of God be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. Yes. They be baptized in your Holy Spirit, Lord. Yes. Got to walk by the Spirit, not after the flesh. Amen. We in celebration, we don't want to just hear the word. We want to act on the word. Glory. We want to reap the harvest of the word. Yes. Right now we're paying tithes and giving offerings. Yes. And as we give, it's given good measure, pressed press down, down shaken, shaken together, together running over. over, men and women will pour back into our bosom so that we can give again. Yes, we thank you, us and our households are yes. saved. Yes. We declare yokes are lifted, burdens are removed. removed. Yes. We thank you that the faithfulness of the righteous yes. goes to the third and the fourth generation. Yes, it does. Goes to our oh, children. Yeah. Our children's children, yes. our children's children's children. Yes. We declare righteousness. And we thank you, souls, thank souls, you. souls thank to your you, kingdom. Thank you. We thank you, bodies are healed, yokes are lifted, burdens are removed. Amen. But above everything, the name of Jesus, lifted up, exalted, and glorified. glorified. In Jesus' name. In the precious Amen. holy name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, <coughs> for your continued healing power yes. flowing in Teresa's body. Yes. We thank you, God, that you have her covered. We thank you, God, for touching Janet Walton, Lord, and for the healing power happening in his body. We thank you that this week, Lord God, you're continuing to touch Caitlin as she was in that car accident. Yes, Lord. Norma Mita's granddaughter. Bringing healing to her body. Proclaiming total healing over her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Father God. We continue standing with Donna and with Paul and Sue. We do. Lifting up Debbie, yes. and we thank you for that we miraculous miracle, body. restorative miracle you're doing in her yes. body. We thank you for Kaylee. Yes, we, we speak to we her body from the top of her body. head to the soles of her feet. We that thank name you, of cancer has got to be gone. In the Lord. In the name of Jesus. For Karen McRae's granddaughter, we lift her and the baby up to you, Father God. We're asking you, Father God, for your healing power. Thank you, Jesus, that Jennifer, yes. Brenda, Brenda's co uh, cousin, is continuing to yes, Lord. recover and be Total strengthened healing. as she's recovering from transplant surgery. Yes. We thank you for doing that, God. We yes. thank you for touching Tyler. Yes. Continuing to heal continuing him. Continuing to heal his body, son, Lord. God. You are touching thank and strengthening you, Jesus. him. We surround and join Harry and Cheryl and their family as they're lifting yes. up Mary Catherine. Yes, we do, Lord. We continue speaking continue to her brain to be healed her body. in the name of Jesus, her entire brain body from the top healed. of her head to the soles All of her matter. feet, Lord God. And as she wakes up, it's going to yes. be done in a peaceful, peaceful manner. manner. We're asking you for a miracle. Yes. The bottom line is a she miracle needs for a miracle. her. For Mary Catherine and also yes. for Scott, Pastor yes, Scott. Pastor Scott. We are asking for he a miracle a in the name of miracle. Jesus. We thank you for touching Peggy and continuing yes, Lord. to heal her. And we, we give you glory healed. and honor for it. And God, we do thank you that little Ellie a couple of weeks ago, yes. she got to have that uh, cast Hallelujah. taken off of her arm. The totally skin's taken out. In Ellie's She's body. completely healed. And continuing to be healed in the name of Jesus. And Tony yes. is continuing in just in that healing shoulder surgery shoulder. he had yes. to be healed and strengthened Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're continuing to speak healing right here Lord, in our own town, right here in 
Morgan, Morgan to, to North, North Carolina. Carolina. We're speaking we declare to that a bloodline over every household. Amen. We thank you that your angels stand guard Absolutely. over every household, shoulder Absolutely. to shoulder, Absolutely. wing to wing, Lord. Yes. Angels around all of our homes Hallelujah. and our households. Yes. Everything Bless we own belongs to you, Lord. Yes. You've given it to us, so we put it back in your hands. Yes. So, Father, we declare, we declare victory. Amen. We declare the enemy driven away. COVID-19 driven from Hallelujah. our community. Hallelujah. It's run out of town on a rail. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. It's Make made a doctors, spectacle of nurses, it. In the name all of Jesus. Of them, Lord God, you're protecting yes. power around yes. them. Yes. Yes. In the name of the Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We continue, Father, to declare your beautiful word found in Psalm 91. When you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God Most High. He is the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy and he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly yes, curse. Yes, his yes. massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you, and you can run under his covering of majesty and hide. Yes. His arms of faithfulness, faithfulness are a shield yes. keeping you from harm. You will yes. never worry about an attack of demonic Ooh. forces at night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness Come coming against you. Yes. Don't fear Don't a Don't fear thing. a thing. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil be launched against you. Mm. Even in a time of disaster with thousands and thousands being killed, yes. you will remain unscathed, Come on. unharmed. Come on. You will be a spectator as the wicked perish in judgment, for they will be paid back for what they've done. That's right. When we live our lives within the shadow of God Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against yes. us or disease infect us? God sends angels with special orders to protect yes. you wherever you go, Amen. defending you from all harm. <clears throat> if you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet. Yes. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect Amen. you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure. and secure. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray, and you will find and feel my presence, even in your time of pressure yes. and trouble, I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast. You will be satisfied with a full life and with all that I do oh. for you. For you will enjoy the fullness, fullness. of my salvation. Yes, amen. Thank you for your word, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank yes, you for Lord. your glorious word. Hallelujah. Thank you for your powerful Ooh. word. Thank you, Father Thank God, you, Lord. that even at this moment yes. again... We are speaking new life yes. and love for the Word of God. Yes. Even deeper. The it's already there. We're yes. in no way saying We're talking that, deeper, that, Lord. that love for the Word is not in celebration. Deeper, deeper, but Father, deeper. we're thanking you for calling us yes. and taking us deeper and making that love for your Word even stronger yes, Lord. than ever. Yes, amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We declare, Hallelujah. we pray, the Lord will bless, bless you, and the you. Lord will keep you. The Lord makes his face to, to shine, shine upon, upon you, you. lifts his countenance upon you, and gives you peace, yes. both now and forever. forever. You're blessed in the city, blessed in the country. Here, Everything you put your hands Amen. to is blessed. blessed. Your barns are blessed. Your fields are blessed. Your kneading boards are blessed. blessed. The fruit of your womb is blessed. blessed. You're blessed when you rise Hallelujah. up. You're blessed when you lie down. Yes. You're the head. You're not the tail. Not the tail. You're on top. You're not on the bottom. Hallelujah. You're the redeemed of the Lord. The redeemed of the Lord shouted, Amen! Amen! Amen. 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 Hallelujah! Amen. We, love, we you. love you so much. Love you Once so, again, happy so birthday much. to everyone. Yes, happy God bless birthday, you. Jerry. We love y'all. God birthday. bless you. Blessings to everybody. Have a wonderful, God bless. We wonderful love afternoon.